All right, now I've got this screen grab of my my little custom made emoji from that website, right? And there's lots I want to change about it. I want it to look more like the attitude of this cat. But I like some of the, the details of the expression. Like one eye's happy, one eye's sad. There's lots of squinting and whiskers and things going on. So in order to play with these vector shapes and make them my own, we can follow the directions in the assignment. It gives you the directions for how to screen grab it. Once you have the screen grab, we're now going to open that screen grab in PhotoP. So we open up PhotoP.com again. If you have multiple windows of PhotoP, just close them. And now, instead of opening a PSD file, I'm just going to open up that screenshot that I put into my Exercise 2 folder. Okay? Now, and this is what you should always do when you first open PhotoP, any image in PhotoP. Go to image, image size. And we're going to look at it in terms of inches and pixels per inch. Mine is seven and a quarter inches wide by 6.92 inches tall. So not even that is big enough yet. It's not eight by 10. And then most importantly, because it's a screen grab, it's only going to be 72 pixels per inch. Because screen resolution is always 72 pixels per inch. So what do I do? Well, I'm going to change it to 300 pixels per inch and then say, OK, but I want you to watch what happens. So when I do that, it blurs everything out, right? It had to invent pixels to go from 72 to 300. Then if I go to image, image size again, now I can also change the width to be Let's just do 10 inches by 10 inches because emojis are often designed on a square. So 10 inches. And then when I click here, it automatically goes to 9.54 inches. That's because the box I dragged wasn't a perfect square. And because of this padlock here, it is locked in proportion. So that's fine. I'll say OK. If I want it to actually be 10 by 10 inches, it has to be at least 8 by 10 inches. I need to go not to image size, but to canvas size. And on canvas size, change it to inches, and then make it 10 by 10. And it will add that extra half an inch onto the top and bottom, my image space. right? So you want to have enough space here. In fact, I might even want to free transform. So I'll come around and help you set this up and shrink this down a little bit so I have more space to grow my cat. If I want to add a little body underneath my cat, I might give it extra space at the bottom. Okay, now that I have an image size, when I check it, image, image size, that is at least 8 by 10. Shouldn't be 8 by 8. Should be 10 by 10 or larger, right? By at least 300 pixels per inch, then I'm good to go. Then I want to save it. So file, save as PSD, we save it with our name and a description. And I'm going to call this Bebop Cat. Save it to the desktop, and then I'll arrange it into my folder at the end of class. So I'll get to your questions. I'll help you guys set it up. You only start putting your vector shapes down once you have the right image size. And you can always hit Command R to turn on your pixels. You want your pixels to be around 3,000 by 3,000. Because that's what 10 inches at 300 pixels per inch gives you. The next step is we're going to go down to the very bottom of the tools in PhotoP. We've mostly only used the tools at the top. The bottom tool is the magnifying glass. We're going to go two up from there to what's called the rectangle tool. Whenever you have the, the little arrow at the bottom right-hand corner of the tools, that means it's a drawer that if you click and hold, it will open up that drawer to give you more similar tools. These are what are called vector shapes. What do I mean by that? If I pick the ellipse, which also can give me a circle, because I want to do the biggest flat shape first, like that first one I chose, I click and drag with it. Notice I didn't make a new layer. And then I let go. 
it will automatically make a vector shape, in this case of something that's circular. That shape will automatically be on its own layer because it's mimicking a vector path. And a vector path can only have one color and it can only exist on one path on its own. So just like a smart object, notice that that vector layer is different than a regular layer, like my screen grab. It has that little box in it. That means it's a smart object. So if I want to edit it, I have to double click on that, and then I can choose a color for it. Like if I want to choose kind of a grayish brown for my cat. Or if I want to match the color of the emoji, what I can do is take that color selector and instead of choosing the yellow from here and trying to match it, I can just click on it in Photopea and it will match it automatically. It's called the eyedropper. Okay, now I can use the move tool to move that shape around. That little blue outline is not actually there, right? That's something to show you the edges of the vector path. We can turn outlines on for the path, but we don't need to. And if I want to change it, I just use Edit Free Transform, just like I did with my composites. So I can squish it a little bit. I can warp it by right-clicking. I'll just actually distort. And I'm just going to bring in these edges a little bit. Make it a little bit more complex of a shape. All right, then hit return. And notice it's still a vector. So I'm going to pause there and help you guys set it up so you can create your first vector shape on top of your screen grab. And I'm going to save my progress as I go. I just hit save, and it's going to save to the desktop. And I'm going to mark this yellow because it's my working file for exercise two.